Hey folks, Marcel, I'm back with The Pulse again, and guess what? David Sinclair has made an appearance. I've been looking for him for a while. It's been relatively quiet, and every once in a while I'll do a search, and for some reason this just came up that he spoke this month, earlier this month, July 2024, at the Aspen Institute, and he was being interviewed, and I'm going to post a link to the video in the description, and where he starts talking about the things I'm going to comment on today is around 25 minutes in, so I encourage you guys to watch it, draw your own conclusions. I'm gonna make my own commentary on his comments, on his video uh, answers to the interviewer, but uh, there's some stuff here that is worth looking into and talking about, so I decided to revisit the topic of our good old friend, Professor David Sinclair. Now, first off, um, I want to make it perfectly clear to the supporters out there of David Sinclair that I'm not an anti-Sinclair person or poster. And I want to make it clear to David Sinclair, I'm not anti-David Sinclair. I want the best for David, but I want to protect an amenus supplement. And I'm going to get into why I'm talking about that specifically here in the scope of my comments about his comments in this interview. But I just want to make that really clear because I owe a huge debt of gratitude to David Sinclair every single day of my life. My children owe a huge debt of gratitude to David Sinclair. My viewers, the thousands of people that are actively taking NMN and making massive changes to their life and improving their health, we're doing what he's talking about right here, and he's triggered it. Okay, He's already done a lot of good by reaching a lot of people He's frustrated on something, and I'm going to use the analogy that he's hitched his wagon to the wrong horse, and it is the medical community that he's chasing. My theory is that he's trying to prove himself right to his peers. That's my theory of watching him for a long time and listening to him, because it's kind of a shame, because the challenges that he talks about, the solution is coming right out of his own statements. The answer's right in his own mouth, and he's, he can't see the forest for the trees. He can't see it. Now, the first thing of note that he talks about is he says the first country to declare aging is a disease is going to be way ahead of the game and start saving a lot of money by treating aging, by reducing these various age-related diseases. And I hope for that. I'm not against that. It's the process that he's going down to get there that is causing a lot of problems for myself and people who take NMN. But he does say the payoff in healthcare could be in the trillions, which is plausible. I think if you look at the results people are getting right now, taking just NMN, he was asked if the FDA has been a good partner for him in his endeavor to get aging declared a disease. And he says yes or no. And he talks about having friends at the FDA as far back as seven years ago that told him, if you can prove to us that aging is a treatable disease, that it's treatable, we will strongly consider aging a medical condition. And I believe that started the process that he's undergoing with Metro Biotech. He dates that back to 10 years ago. The company was founded then, but then he's borrowing credibility from the research that's gone on at Harvard. So how much of that research was actually owned by Metro Biotech at the time or spearheaded by them and how much of it went on in the lab? And if that even matters, is all open to question. Now, one thing he does state is that there's a lack of biomarkers for aging, and that's one of the hindrances, right? They need to prove that it's treatable, but what are you measuring? Consider something else he says. He says one to two grams, people can take that right now as a supplement and start raising their NAD levels. And I'll go on to say, get some of the positive results that we're seeing here. Now, one to two grams, that's a pretty wide range. One of the challenges that I've seen with NMN as a supplement, and I assume a drug would be the same challenge, is how much should a person take? This varies with age. This varies with sex sometimes. This varies with weight. This varies with metabolism. Ultimately, it's all going to come down to how the person feels. Because you're going to ask them, how do you feel at 500 milligrams? How do you feel at one gram? 
take the leap and assume that NMN is a drug, exclusive or not. Just take the leap and say it's a pharmaceutical drug. How is the doctor going to determine how much a patient should be taking? It's ultimately going to be determined by how they're responding. You're going to have biomarkers to measure, but you're also going to be talking, and, and those aren't even determined. So the only thing you really have to go by that's concrete is how they're responding to treatment. How active are you? How do you feel? So yes, you're going to need those biomarkers. Some of them, I would argue, already exist. He talks about them later. As I said, the answers are right in his own statement, right? The biomarkers are there. He knows that. He's just looking for which ones he can manipulate the best and then which ones you can tie to aging. The money problem that he talks about, he says he needs $25 plus million plus to investigate any drug, new drug. 25 plus million dollars. So he talks about the overall NMN industry right now that he was shocked to find out it's $2.5 billion. I'm not convinced in that number because he states no source. Like what's the institute that stated $2.5 billion? I'm not saying it's not true. I've said here it's 250, 300 million plus based on my own methodology, which is to add up the market share of the largest NMN sellers, talk to many of those CEOs myself, make some extrapolations from that. And I, that's how I came up with my number. Like I looked at the US market and then I multiplied by three as an estimate. I could be way off, he could be way off. Maybe the answer is somewhere in the middle, but there's a big difference between 250 million and 2.5 billion. I'm gonna call out BS on this. I'm going to say, this is hyperbole. This is him trying to raise money. This is David Seclair. This is what professors do. This is what people who run labs, they're point people for their teams that he talks about here. And he's trying to raise money for Metro Biotech. I'm reading into that from also other statements and other actions that he's taken. But I found it amazing that he came out with no source and says, oh, it's $2.5 billion industry. Is it 1 billion? You would need, for it to be 1 billion, you would need about 10 million people to be taking NMN regularly. Are 10 million people around the world taking NMN regularly? Maybe. When you look at how big Asia is, he talks about going to Hong Kong with his partner, seeing two full shelves of it, in a store that he walked into in Hong Kong. So could it be that millions of people in Asia are taking NMN, inflating that overall number quite a bit? Could be. He also says, and I found this very interesting because again, his actions don't support his statement. He says that he's been accused of trying to take NMN off the market as a supplement, but that's the action his company has taken. That's what the FDA is already in the process of doing, my friend. The FDA is removing NMN from the market. They're just not finished with that task yet, but they've begun that process. They've slowed down this channel by 80%. Our traffic is down by 80% of what it was a year ago. They've decimated this channel's traffic. That's just an indicator. It has nothing to do with this channel. I've continued the channel. I've marched on forward, right? And, and I'm looking at other platforms and I'm spreading my wings a bit, but that's astounding to me that the market is that big and his actions are only going to impact the United States. So you talk about unfair, unethical. The FDA can't force the rest of the world to take NMN off the market, not if it's that big. So I asked the question to David Seclair, what are you doing? What good are you doing for the end result, for the cause of treating aging? What good are you doing to go backwards? Like if we already have a $2.5 billion industry, why don't you hitch your wagon to that horse? Why don't you change horses and start going to the one that's going in the direction that you want to go in, which is to raise money? David Sinclair on the path that he's taken might become a billionaire one day. He might. Things might fall in his favor, but the train's already left the station. So if he wanted to enrich himself to expand his research, whatever you want to do with the money, do it. Instead of, as he stated, having his attorney send cease and desist letters to all these supplement companies using his name and likeness, which he also said was the case in Hong Kong and elsewhere, 
You're spending money to make nothing. You're just trying to protect your image and likeness, which he has the right to do. Why not hitch your wagon to the supplement industry? Why not pick some companies you trust and align yourself with them because that train's already on the way to the destination and they would fight your battles for you. They would send cease and desist to their would-be competitors, the other companies using your name and likeness without authorization. It just makes a lot more sense to me. So the solution is coming out of his own mouth. It's a $2.5 billion industry. He's not getting it. There's your money. There's your 25 plus million. It's right there. You just said it. You're just going the wrong way about it. You're going the way that requires a lot of money you don't have. And you're going to get to the same place. You're going to combat aging and save trillions of dollars in health care. Why does it have to be the medical industry that is your partner? Why? To what end? What are you accomplishing? Some ego trip of convincing your peers that you were right all along. Who cares? Who cares how many people talk badly about you? If you don't care, if you have thick skin that you say you have, who really cares how many people talk badly about you if you're reaching your stated goal of slowing down aging for people? It's already there. Now, the biomarkers. Why, why do I say it's already there? They've shown, he's shown in his lab, that they can lower bad cholesterol with NMN, lower blood pressure, lower triglycerides, lower body weight, and improve fitness. Matter of fact, they have five ongoing clinical trials, which I assume all need funding. And they have one study funded by the military to study strength conditioning, strength improvement from NMN. And so these are all things we've talked about before, but you know he's doubling down on all of them. So the main point I'm making is he has taken action to take NMN off the market. The route he's going, where he's headed by definition will hurt NMN as a supplement. I don't think he'll ever fully get it off the market. So it's kind of wrong to accuse him of trying to take it off the market because I don't think that's possible anymore. I think it's too big. And because that train's already left the station, you already have your biomarkers, you already have your market, what are you doing? I've been around businesses for decades. I advise businesses in the music industry, in the audio industry, and they made millions of dollars based on my advice. It's still what I do, quote unquote, professionally, is I lend advice to different companies who are marketing to the audio world, because that's a market, that's an industry where I have a lot of interest and a lot of experience. I know how to recognize markets. You don't always have to create one from scratch. In this case, he created the market from scratch by talking about publicly NMN. The market exists, but instead of it being here, it's over here. And he's denying that fact. He's ignoring the market he created. And he's not cashing in on the market he created by his own choice. He's not a victim. He's just a bad businessman. He's just going against the tide instead of with the tide. It makes no sense. It baffles me. What he's saying out of his own mouth, it's a $2.5 billion industry and I don't understand why I can't make any money. We keep sending cease and desist and the industry keeps growing. So why don't you stop sending cease and desist letters? Align yourself with some key partners in this $2.5 billion industry, if it's that size. And who really cares what the total of the industry is for NMN? It's massive. It's likely between a half billion and two billion, somewhere in there. It's massive. There's enough there. And overnight, I would argue overnight, the advances he could demand, the percentages he could demand, and then he could do his own tests. He could have his own lab testing the purity, testing the safety of that NMN. And then he could share all of his results in improving these various biomarkers that he already has, that he says he doesn't have, but then he lists them one by one. And he could share that data publicly with those companies he partners with. NMN could remain a supplement. It can be a drug. He could still, Metro Biotech could go, matter of fact, they'd have unlimited funds to continue to pursue NMN in parallel to it being a supplement so that doctors could then legally prescribe NMN in specific dosages for specific conditions, such as potentially aging. He could win every battle here. This is the answer. And it's coming from his own statements. 
What he lacks is the ability to connect the dots. This is what FDA ironically said they didn't do with NMN. They didn't connect the dots. That MIB-626 was the same as NMN. It was the same substance. So I'm saying, David, you're not connecting your own dots. I'm taking your own information. And by the way, I have some information of supplement companies that had made him offers. One was very close to closing a deal with him when he deviated. Why? He sabotaged his own success by this Metro Biotech action that's choking him. And I regret to say, I don't think he looks much better at 55. I don't think he looks a lot better. And that's not a knock on him. I'm just stating overall, I don't think he looks, and I don't think it has anything to do with NMN or his fitness routine. I think all of this is stressing him out. And why do I think it's on his mind? Because he's talking about it. So the things he's chosen to talk about at the Aspen Institute reflect what's on his mind. I think he's trying to raise money. I think he's using that platform to speak to people with money, to get countries and corporations to invest, maybe grant money to invest in what he's doing. Yet the money is already there for him to get. I guarantee you, they've offered me what amounts to millions. The companies out there, if I made myself for sale, even with my small 30,000 viewers, I can generate millions if I was chasing the almighty dollar. But I have a storyline to stick to. I have to stick to the storyline. I'm not saying I'll never partner with another company other than Do Not Age, but that's my story. He's not even sticking to his story. His storyline is NMN is a supplement that people can take and feel better and do all of these things. That was his story. And somewhere he deviated from that. And that's where I think things started to go downhill for him, where things got worse for him instead of better. David, I think your answers are in your own mouth. You already created the market. You just refused to cash in on it because it's not where you wanted to be. I pursued music for a long time in my life, and I wanted it to go a certain way. I wanted to have a certain success with a certain kind of music. And the entire time, I didn't have success. I had success with a song I wrote in 1987 in Argentina. It's still played on the radio to this day. But that wasn't my script. That wasn't on my terms. So I either wasn't aware of it, for a while I wasn't, or I just ignored it. I kept trying to write the script myself. But oftentimes in life, I would say most of the time, the script writes itself. And you have to learn to read the script and follow the script that life is writing for you. Yes, based on your actions, right? It's an action and it's a reaction. But he's not recognizing, it. and a scientist, a very accomplished scientist, is not recognizing what is an obvious observation, that he's already got his success. He's just ignoring it. He's refusing it. And that's his own fault. That's his own doing. It's not like NMN isn't a billion dollar plus industry. It already is. And he created it. So just connect the dots. What's missing here? His refusal to accept it as legitimate. He's refusing to accept that script that's written partially for him. He doesn't believe supplements are legitimate enough for his profession. It's demeaning to him. He'll be judged poorly. So he's not going after it. That's the only conclusion I can come to from listening to him and knowing what's going on with NMN. I don't understand it. I'm calling him out on it. If anyone is close to David, I encourage you to share this with him and make him rethink this. Because as a person who consults with businesses, resulting in millions of dollars, he could be generating hundreds of millions of dollars. If I could make millions chasing multiple companies to lend my own endorsement to, imagine what David Sinclair could generate overnight. And I'd be grateful. Just to get him off our backs, I'd be grateful. And the world would be a better place for it. He would be doing society a massive favor and himself a massive, massive favor. That's my take on this. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I look forward to hearing from you guys, and I'll see you again soon.